Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is how to create a first person flashlight system in which you can move the flashlight around and the camera is going to follow where it goes. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So if I were to walk up to this wall behind me you can see that the flashlight is going to be moving about and the camera is going to follow it like this which gives this kind of nice effect which would be really good for horror games. It's kind of more immersive as this is how you would typically do it in real life as well. You'd move the flashlight as you're also moving your head so it'd be kind of like this which I think gives a really nice effect and looks really really cool. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me that's content, third person, blueprints, BP third person character. In here we're going to go straight up to the viewport and we want to make sure that we have a first person camera on our character as you can see here. So again, I'm obviously using the third person character blueprint, but that doesn't matter because I have a first person character here just because I wanted the mesh and all the other blueprints we have by default in here. So if you don't know how to make a true first person camera like this in third person template, I'll leave a link to a video in the description down below and on screen now where you can watch how to do that. But you can also just do this in the first person template as well. But essentially, once you have a first person character, what we want to do is select our mesh and add a component with this being a spring arm. So we're going to add in a spring arm there, again, parented to the mesh. Then we want to parent our camera to the spring arm, as you can see, perfectly like so. Now, obviously, this is moved over here, so we're going to want to do a little bit of modifying to this. Let's select the spring arm, and then you can see this is where it goes in the moment. So we're going to leave it at 0, 0, 0. Then we're going to set the arm length also to 0, and it's going to move the camera all the way back over here like so. Then with the spring arm still selected, what we're going to do is tick use pawn control rotation and then we're going to want to select our camera again and then we can untick use pawn control rotation as we don't need it anymore and then rotate our camera to be in the position we want based upon our spring arm here. Now we'll see this looks a bit weird so I'm going to reset the rotation entirely and now this looks perfect and I'll also do the location as well and then just get this back to where I want it to be perfectly like so. Now if we wanted, what we could also do is target the spring arm to the head, like we did with the camera before. So now we have something like this, and let's go back on the camera and reset everything once again. And now we have it where we want. Select the spring arm, we're going back and forth quite a bit I know. We can then modify this target arm length. So if we set this to 20 for example, or minus 20, it's going to go forward, so let's actually set it to minus 15. And I mean you can obviously then customise this as much as you like to get the perfect values for you. So now that we've got our basic camera set up, we want to then also implement the flashlight. So what we're going to do is select the mesh once again, add another component, and we're going to add in a spotlight, like so, as that is the typical flashlight shape that we want to use. So we can again move this into the position which we want, which for me I'm going to put just in front of the camera, as I think that is going to be the best place for it, based upon the system we are creating for a first person flashlight system. Then you can change all these different values, so I'm just going to increase the intensity by quite a bit just for the purpose of the tutorial so that we can see it. And then what I might also do is parent this to the head as well, just so it moves where the head is moving to. So let's reset that and then I'll just move it forwards again like so. I think that is going to be good for me. And If we hit play, we should see that we now have this flashlight here like so, moving where we move. But this isn't exactly how we want the system to work yet. All we've done is we've got the flashlight on here. So the rest of this is actually very, very simple. What we're going to do is go to the event graph, then we're going to right click and get event tick, perfectly like so. And then out of this, what we're going to do is get the spotlight, so drag a reference in like so, and then set world rotation, plugging that into event tick like so. And then the new rotation of this wants to just be get control rotation. So essentially, wherever the player's camera is looking, the spotlight is going to go. Now at the moment, this will just then be perfectly in time. So if we hit play, let's turn around. Wherever the player's camera goes, the flashlight also goes, which is kind of how we had it before. So what if we want to make it look a little bit better? So the flashlight is kind of leading the camera. If we select the spring arm, what we can do is then enable camera rotation lag like so, and then you can modify the speed down here. So if we leave it at the default with 10, what you can see, there's going to be a slight bit of lag on the rotation of the camera, which means the flashlight is going to get there first. So we can increase this even further, so let's set it to 40 instead of 10, 
see what that looks like. So that is then obviously going to be more responsive, so it's slightly more subtle. And if we do lower it down to one, for example, this will be a lot more exaggerated. So you can really see that there's a lot of lag on this. So it's more of a cinematic camera. It's not perfect, especially for a game. But you can really see the effects that we're getting here. You can move the flashlight any way you want and the camera is kind of going to follow around it like so. So if you maybe have a game where you're just looking in this one direction, this would probably be perfect for what you want. But for a game where you're walking around completely, maybe it isn't ideal. But values like this will be great for you. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up a system in which we have this first person flashlight which will lead the camera like so. And I think this works perfectly for a horror game or any kind of game that you want. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.